suffer, is it? Join me in prayer. Oh Lord, you have been our dwelling place for generations. This morning, oh God, we invite your presence with us as we remember and celebrate and lift up all those who have made this day possible and all those who will call this place home. Particularly, we lift up the Terry, the Shields, the Palmore, and the Garcia families this day. We pray all of this, O oh God, in the name of the one who is our safe place, especially those who are vulnerable. Amen. Amen. For the past 28 years, seeking to put God's love into action, Habitat for Humanity of Collin County has brought people together to build homes, communities, and hope. The need is very great in Collin County. Um, our average home sale price is $385,000, and our average family income is $42,000 a year. The purchase of these homes is well out of reach for many of the families that apply to our programs. Since 2018, in the last two years, we've had 870 interested applicants apply to our program. The need for affordable housing is so great, and our organization realized that we had to find a solution to use the precious land that is available to build more homes, thus serving more families. This land that we are standing on was purchased in 2018 uh, with a grant from the McKinney Community Development Corporation, and we have several board members here today, so if y'all will just raise your hand, let's recognize MCD. We began a process of clearing the land, preparing the plan development, and presenting the, to planning and zoning, and then city council. We were overwhelmed with support for this innovative solution in affordable housing built out of shipping containers. The city staff and city manager, Paul Grimes is here, I want to say thank you. They were amazing throughout the process. This was the first time this type of project had gone through the city, and it was a little challenging for them. They were, not only were they supportive, but even when we had a manhole that had to be removed, the city staff stepped up and took out the manhole for us. So they came together all very well. The planning department also had to hand walk our inspections through because this type of um, development doesn't follow the normal stick frame process. Um, so that has been a challenge for them as well. This project resides in a neighborhood empowerment zone, so we made sure that the architectural features, which you can see on these two banners, um, were incentives so that we could keep the cost low for our low-income families. The site we're standing home will be home to 35 families, an amenity center, and a playground designed by We Build Fun. And I see Vince Allen here. Where did he go? Over there. So he's the designer of our playground. <laughs> the concept of cotton grows was birthed because this area used to be home to cotton fields. And later near us is the cotton mill and the cotton gin. So it was very appropriate to name it Cotton Grows. If you noticed when you came in, it's lined a grove of trees on both sides, so there is a name, Cotton Grove. This area's rich heritage inspired the idea of using a more industrial design to blend in with the rich history and the legacy of people. This project would not be possible without the visionary JDL group led by J.D. Lee, okay, um, our architect from EJES, um, Gary Mira, right here. Um, Texas Development Services civil engineer Brian Umberger, who oversaw all of this infrastructure development. Our mechanical engineers, Joe and Peter from Lawanda Company out of Frisco. Our structural engineer, Modi KC. Is Modi here? Okay. And um, along with fabrication support, because this is not normal construction, we had to have fabricators um, helping us with this project. Umberger out of Sanger, and then Falcon Structures near Austin. Habitat was also selected um, last year as a social innovation accelerator program through the United Way. Um, we had three mentors that walked through the process with us, and one of them is here today, Michael Martin. Right there. So thank you. <laughs> to understand, refine, 
and document the process of building, we create a model home, which we call our training center. Um, so that our volunteers, our staff, our city inspectors, everyone could learn how this went together. And we could document the process with a playbook. This is located in the parking lot of our ReStore. If you haven't seen it yet, um, you need to go by and see it, and we'll have an open house soon. Um, our construction director, James Donaldson. Where's James? He's on his way back. Oh, okay. He's on his way back. He has been so instrumental um, pushing the envelope and learning a new construction technique with volunteers, which has been very challenging, um, but very rewarding. Um, here you'll see the um, visual development on the banners. We have the color palette um, and the stone that matches each different type. Um, the townhomes will have a covered carport. Two cars can park in the carport. A very large deck. They'll have three and four bedrooms, two baths, and a large space upstairs um, for a second living or an office space. There are so many people to thank for making this project a success, and I'd like to invite our board chair, Marty Smith, to come up and give some words of thanks on behalf of the board. Thank you, Celeste. Thanks for leaving your gloves for me. <laughs> sure. It's clearly much colder in this end of the building than it is in this one. I think it's the hot air of everyone greeting each other in the, the furnace over there. So thank you all for sitting over here. And we'll make this quick. So I, I'd like to start out by thanking um, the campaign leadership team. So early on, uh, we had to come together to figure out um, how we could put a campaign get together to um, make this all happen. So uh, Jerrica Anderson and Annie McNally, are they here? No? They uh, took on the responsibility to kind of kick off that campaign leadership team and put it together, um, comprised of staff and uh, board members. So a lot of our board members, um, current, past presidents, emeritus board members, and alumni, all came together to put this, um, this uh, campaign committee together to make this happen. Um, also, I'd just like to say thanks to the board. We have 100% participation from all of our board members and commitments to make this happen. That was key in order to drive this forward. Um, so thank you to that campaign leadership team. Um, our staff, so um, Celeste mentioned James. I don't know if he's made it here yet, but is he coming? There he is. So I, I would love to go out to the parking lot after meetings and whatnot and meet with James and say, James, how's it going? Well, something would come up, but James, Working with our volunteers, um, have put a great plan together to build these buildings. If you haven't had the chance to go out, please do so. Uh, this is an amazing opportunity for us. Um, can you come in, in here? So um, it's taken a while to get to where we are today. You can't see a lot of the stuff that's going on. Um, Kim's been responsible for working with the city to make a lot of that stuff happen. So thanks to Kim. And then Doug, thanks for putting this. Where did Doug go? Thanks for putting together this event today. Um, we don't do grooming often. We always have to put things together for everyone. Um, our sponsors. So in your programs, uh, when you open up, um, you see basically a lot of the people that have made this happen from a sponsor perspective. Uh, Celeste has already talked about the developers. Um, our lead sponsors, so um, you know, McKinney Community Development Corporation, what more can we say? Thank you so much to to the city and to that corporation to allow us to do what we do. Uh, North, Ball North Dallas Bank and Trust, um, thanks, thanks to you for helping us put the financing together to make this happen. Um, developing Solutions, John and Mary, um, you guys have been very instrumental in Habitat throughout the years and appreciate your continued support and all you do for this affiliate. Um, and Grant Laughlin, is Grant here? Yes. There he is. Grant. Thank you to you and the uh, Laughlin Beers Foundation for uh, close to 40 years now supporting nonprofits in the area. So appreciate your help as, in making this happen as well. Um, obviously, a lot more sponsors on here, um, a, lo a lot to mention, um, and our uh, gift in kind. So, gift in kind are people that provide materials, uh, provide skilled labor for us to do what it is we do. Um, we've had a long relationship with a lot of these. Um, Vendors, um, C, uh, Seymour, Don here, Simcor, Don make it today. 
So Don's been very instrumental in helping us um, with a lot of his time and his company's time to, to work through a lot of the items that we have. So um, total heat and air. So Steve Lawton, I don't think Steve's here today, but um, his company has helped figure out how you put heating and air conditioning in a box. Mostly when we build a house, we have attic space to work with for all of that, but we had to put it in a box. We had to figure out how we can get ventilation and all that in there. So um, multiple tries, and I think we've got a great solution going forward. So thanks to, to Steve and his company for working through that. Um, so we've got flat ground now. We're going to start putting the containers in here. Uh, we're going to start building from the ground up. I appreciate everything our sponsors have done to get us to this point. But we've got 35, not containers, not construction projects. We've got 35 homes that we're going to be putting out here. And we're going to build this community. And that's what it is we do from a Habitat perspective. So we're looking forward to all of you to continue to sponsor us and make this a reality. Um, and, and helping us with our mission of seeking to put God's love into action. We're going to bring people together to build homes, communities, and hope. If you have not heard the stories from our families and seeing the jubilation that they feel when they move into their habitat home. You have to experience that. That is a, a lifetime changing event. So thank you to all of our sponsors and thank you all for being out here today to support us. City Councilman at Large, City of McKinney. I'm here today on behalf of Mayor Fuller, who would very much like to be here with you. If you do not know, Mayor Fuller is a developer here in McKinney, and I know that he's excited about this project. However, his wife has been diagnosed with COVID, and so he's self-quarantining. Uh, he's safe, and I understand that his wife is experiencing a few symptoms. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Randy Rogers is traveling this week, and so you got stuck with me. Thank you. <laughs> um, excited about this project. Uh, the entire city is very excited about the project, and we're thankful to have Habitat for Humanity uh, step up as a nonprofit to provide affordable housing in a very creative and unique method and a cost savings method. And so, to Celeste Cox, thank you very much to Habitat for Humanity of Collin County for bringing this project to McKinney. Uh, City Council gets to stand up here and take a lot of credit for things, and we're not the workers. Uh, we have the workers here with us. Mr. Paul Grimes, our city manager, would you mind standing up for us, please? <laughs> we, also, we also have two of our assistant city managers, Ms. Kim Flom and Ms. Barry, uh, if you would. These are the guys who are actually pedaling the bicycle, as Paul likes to call it. We're just steering. And these are the guys that do all the work and bring wonderful projects like this before the Planning and Zoning Commission and, and the City Council. We we're fortunate to have uh, the CDC. Uh, most people in today's time, you say CDC, and they're thinking Center for Disease Control. Um, but we're talking about the Community Development Corporation here in McKinney. We have Miss Cindy Snigel here with us. And, and Cindy, I believe you have a lot of your uh, board with you. If you guys would please stand up so we can see who you are. are appointed by the City Council and they serve at, 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 on a volunteer basis, but what the CDC does is one half of the sales tax, that, one half cent of the sales tax that you pay in McKinney, Texas, that eight and a half percent, one half cent goes to the uh, CDC, the other half cent goes to the Economic Development Corporation. Uh, All together that comes to about $17 million a year for the CDC to invest in projects like this in McKinney. And what I want you to know is when you shop local, great things happen here in McKinney like this project. And it's due in large part to volunteers like the folks who sit on this board. Uh, and also the city staff and those who are employed by the city to put all of this into action. It's an honor for me to stand here and give my blessings and the mayor's blessings over this project, and I hope 
that in the years to come, this project will be an example to other cities of how to provide affordable homes in a creative manner, and that McKinney will still be an example going into the future. And the greatest thing about McKinney is its people. Because you've come out on the most miserable day of the year so far, and the place is literally packed with people, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic. So you guys are what makes McKinney great, and I thank each and every one of you for being here today, and I wish the best of luck to Habitat for Humanity and the Cotton Groves uh, New Homes. Thank you. that we are here because of our families that will be living here. We have the first four families to introduce to you today. So first, um, Cedric, CJ, Terry, if you'll come forward. Um, he has two children, Braylon, 10, and Gabrielle, 9, and he works for Paul and College. So let's welcome you. <laughs> the Palmore family, Curtis and Sharon. Curtis works at Petco, and Sharon works at our Plano Resort, so we know her. <laughs> the Garcia family, Carolina and her two children, Ian 9 and Joel 4, and she works for Princeton ISD. <laughs> and then finally, Latonya DeShield and her two children, Anaya Booker 19 and Juwan is 14. And she works as a teacher in McKinney ISD. And she's going to give us a special thanks on behalf of all the homeowners. So come on up, Latanya. Good morning. My name is Latanya DeShield. And on behalf of the Cotton Girls families that are going to be living here, we'd like to say thank you for this opportunity. We'd like to say thank you first to the City of McKinney and to all of the volunteer people who have volunteered to let us be able to come into their facilities and work and get our sweat equity. We're all so excited to be on this journey. There are so many things we've learned through the process and things we haven't learned because we haven't <laughs> been able to go in and finish seeing how a lot of things work. So, Hopefully we'll get to do that. But um, I've been teaching in child care for 24 years. I've worked with lots of families in our city. I've also volunteered and co-facilitated getting ahead and just to get by world. Faith and finances and bridges that unite. I look forward to meeting my neighbors. And I also look forward to calling this place our home. So we'll actually have a home. Instead of ring, we'll have a home. really proud to know that 
we can start a project and see it through as a group. And just want to say thank you again. And like Charlie said, we are here because you buy in McKinney. So the more you spend in McKinney, the more we have to spend on projects like this. Thank you for letting us be here. Thank you. And like MCDC said, um, it is a grant that we receive. It's a reimbursable grant. So we have to spend the money up front and then get reimbursed after um, we turn in our receipts. So there is that gap of funding. Um, and we wouldn't be able to do it without North Dallas Bank and Trust. Sam Gunn is here. Um, you want to say anything? Um, without them, um, they provided a very, very low interest rate loan, um, flexible financing. They're constantly helping us with what we need. And you want to say a few things? Well, I've been really excited. We, My board of directors, our executive loan committee, we've all been watching this closely. It's not every day that we get a chance to do something that really has a meaningful impact in our community. This definitely fits the bill. Um, so really thankful for the partnership and the opportunity to work with Celeste and everybody and uh, looking forward to seeing these things get built and uh, thank you for allowing us to play our small role. Thank you. So we are going to go outside and do the groundbreaking. Everyone can stand on the concrete because we're not going to go out in the mud. Um, and before we go out there, because I figure you'll probably leave after that, I'm just going to go ahead and close. I want to thank everyone coming today and um, invite you to attend our open house of our model townhome. It's going to be professionally staged by one of our board members, Matt Hilton, and it'll be open for tours all day on December 2nd from 9 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Um, so we want to make sure that you come and see it and tour it. It's <coughs> amazing. I also want to thank a couple of special attendees we have. Um, I have Nicole from Crisco Family Services, one of our fellow nonprofits, came to see us. And then Lori um, Meanley from Grayson County Habitat up in Sherman, she came to um, participate in this program. So thanks to our special guests. <laughs> so now if you'll join us outside, we're going to get the shovels in the developer's hands and we'll break ground.